In this video we have seen the passive diode testing with a resistor and a changing uh, supply voltage to detect the barrier voltage via a uh, voltmeter. But now I want to pay some attention to the capacitance that's uh, present on the barrier layer inside the diode. So this is passive diode testing part 2. Every diode has a barrier layer and the thickness of that layer uh, depends on the voltage that is applied to the terminals from the diode. So at higher voltages uh, the thickness from that layer um, changes compared to a situation with a lower voltage. And that also means that the, here in the, in the diode there is a certain capacitance. And that capacitance also changes with the voltage applied to the diode. And that's very handy because we can use diodes as a capacitor. When we connect two diodes anti-parallel to a coil and we uh, change the voltage on the node here by means of this potentiometer and we apply let's say a voltage between 0 and 30 volts, the capacitance here inside these two diodes will change and that means that also the parallel capacitance to the coil changes and we can set the frequency from the coil. So we can tune in by changing the voltage with this potentiometer to the diodes. And these diodes are called varicaps or varactors, variable capacitance diodes. Of course there must be an oscillator circuit. Uh, I've uh, draw this, drawn this um, in a very short time, but um, the coil is collected, connected to the base, etc. And the capacitance on the base changes. And um, that also makes that the frequency changes. In fact, this is the certain circuit, the decisive circuit, where it all happens. And now I want to show how all these diodes that I have here um, act when I connect them to a capacitance meter. This is my capacitance meter. I hope you can read it. And at first we are going to test um, the general purpose 1N4007 silicon diode. And when we connect it to the capacitance meter, we read that it has a capacitance from approximately 22 picofarad. And that means that this capacitor is useful as a varicap, variable capacitor, in an oscillator circuit. And uh, now we're going to see what happens when we connect the capacitance meter to the other diodes. This is the 1N5408. And now I can't read the capacitance. That's quite strange because I have found real capacitance with this diode don't know what happens exactly. Yes, this is it. Uh, this diode has also a useful capacitance from 47, approximately 47 picofarad. And it's also important to know that the capacitance also uh, is decisive for the properties from the diode. Especially switching diodes have a very low capacitance on their barrier. And 
and general purpose diodes have a higher uh, capacitance on their barrier and a switching diode um, has to switch of course so the, the potential changes in a very very uh, short time let's say 250 megahertz that's a quite a very short time and also the capacitance has to drain out in this switching moment because the, the polarity changes and switching diodes have a low capacitance so they are specially constructed uh, on their low capacitance on the barrier layer and that's also what we see here I now connect the capacitance meter to the switching diode typical switching diode fast switching diode for nanoseconds so the uh, the charge on the on both layers inside the diode uh, has to flow away very quickly that also means that the physical dimension from such a diode are uh, often very small you can see that it's a tiny diode and here you see on the capacitance meter that this diode has almost no capacitance perhaps uh, let's say 1 picofarad or 0 0.5 picofarad and um, yeah I, I can of course also um, test the other diodes this is a germanium diode switching diode has no capacitance unknown diode no capacitance germanium diode from the 70s almost no capacitance germanium russian power diode almost no capacitance but uh, the interesting thing is that also LEDs light emitting diodes have a certain capacitance on their junction on their barrier layer this is a green one green LED and here you can see that the green LED has a certain capacitance not much this is the white LED I think I have a bad connection inside my uh, yeah that's it sorry uh, this is the green LED capacitance from let's say 15 picofarad the white LED capacitance from 47 picofarad and the yellow LED has a capacitance from approximately 7 picofarad so all these LEDs that you see here are useful in a radio circuit parallel to a tuning coil and in that uh, case they can be used as a um, varactor a capacity diode a varicap Also inside the transistor there is always a certain capacitance between the collector and the base and also between the base and the emitter and the because a transistor uh, consists of two diodes um, and this capacitance here can also disturb some properties from the diode dio from, sorry from the transistor especially when it has to amplify higher frequencies so typical high frequency transistors have a very low capacitance here between their collector and the base.